Welcome to service today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us come into the light of Christ, confessing our need for God's mercy, holy and faithful God. We so often choose our own way instead of yours. We think we can evade your commandments. We have spoken in ways that kill, strayed with our hearts, betrayed friends and hated enemies. We have broken our promises. Search us deeply and create us anew. Lift the heavy burden of our sin and free us to follow your way of life. Amen. Call upon me, says the Lord, and I will answer. Our God has come among us to loose every bond and set us free from all that weighs us down. Receive the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Jesus 
the Holy Spirit be with you all and also, also with, with you. you. prayer for the day. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the ruler of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created thee. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God. Who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow up on the mountains? God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the, knee, in the speed of a runner. runner but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, 
so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law became as one outside the law, though I am not free of, <clears throat> I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a high fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve him. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went out through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The first part of the Gospel presented an interesting challenge. After the listen, leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Think about it. Remember that Simon was renamed Peter by Jesus. So, if Simon Peter's mother-in-law in his house has a fever, that means Peter is married and his mother-in-law lives with him. So here is the thought experiment that occurred to me. Albert Einstein was famous for thought experiments. I have one here. What would happen if my mother-in-law Claire was living at my home with Kathy and me? She is miraculously healed from a high fever, gets up, and then I say to her, look, would you go cook some food for my friends and I and serve it? I suspect that I would be directed by Kathy and Claire to make myself an igloo outside and go live in it, sleep out there. Ah, uh, but that was the burden of women in Jesus' time. But moving on from dangerous thought experiments, there is meaning in the concept of, he lifted her up. It was inspiring to think about it and read about the thoughts of others. The people of the Bible are often lifted or lifted up. Well-used metaphor. In Mark, uh, it says, And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit. I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. And after convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Jesus lifted him. He didn't make the boy get up on his own. He lifted him. Jesus can lift us. We don't have to do it all on our own. The gift of faith allows us to see the hand of Jesus reaching for us and we grasp it and can be lifted up. 
heal. In one of my favorite books, The Rope, Demetrius, the Greek slave and close friend of Marcellus, he's a Roman tribune, which is a high-ranking military official, uh, Demetrius sees and is seen by Jesus on the road to Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. And it reads like this, The eyes, Jesus, calmly appraised Demetrius. They neither widened nor smiled, but in some indefinable manner they held Demetrius in a grip so firm it was almost a physical compulsion. The message they communicated was something other than sympathy, something more vital than friendly concern, a sort of stabilizing power that swept away all such negations as slavery, poverty, or any other afflicting circumstance. Demetrius was suffused with the glow of this curious kinship. Blind with sudden tears, he elbowed through the throng and reached the roadside. Is that, this is a wonderful description of the joy, the depth of being lifted up. It did not make life easy for Demetrius, but it made it, gave, made it meaningful and gave it purpose. Uh, in the sermon, Father Robert Cruz states, Jesus insists, unless a man be spiritually reborn, unless he can be lifted up, unless he can learn to look beyond earthly, fleshly, conventional, familiar things, he cannot see God's kingdom. So look at the experience of being lifted up, what it did for Demetrius, what it can do for others. Is, it some, is there something, someone, you or I can lift up? Martin Luther says, but Christ's intention is not that repentance shall be so preached as to leave the conscious in its terror-stricken state, but that those who have been brought to knowledge of their sins are contrite in heart, shall again be comforted and lifted up. See, we can see again that lifting up not as something magical, not as an experience, not as something magical, but as an experience, deeply personal and transformative. Martin Luther also says here in a verse where he warns us of having a shallow faith. But however great, both in word and deed, God's promise of grace is toward those that fear him, yet they cannot lift up their hearts and joyfully look upon God. Now from the psalm today, the Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I believe that in many of the Gospels, lifted up and healed are synonymous, or even better, being lifted up creates the opportunity for healing. Can we be lifted up or healed? I believe yes, we can. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. Can it be that Christ's being lifted up on the cross is how God made it possible for us to be lifted up. God reaching to us, lifting us up through Jesus as Jesus lifted up the mother-in-law of Simon. So in reading the, the Gospel, the next paragraph of the Gospel is a very non-sequitur. I, I don't understand how the people who put, decide what we should read put these two paragraphs together, but they did. And so we're gonna use it as a good opportunity to bring Jesus to us as a person. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. Oh, well, here we are, back again at the house of Simon Peter, his wife and mother-in-law. The whole city was gathered about the door. Put yourself there, or, okay, again, we are back in my house with Kathy and Claire, Imagine most of Vernon gathered out in front of the front door, gathered across, even across the street into the farm and out to the side into the churchyard. Many of these people are sick. And it's a pandemic after all. It's frightening, confusing, overwhelming. What is everyone thinking, feeling, scared? Looking to Jesus, all of these people, to fix anything and everything from illness to circumstances. It's no wonder Jesus went to a deserted place to pray and escape. 
The great rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, depicts in interest, instruments and song, the throng of the crowd around Jesus, his weariness and frustration, and it's in the song, The Temple. So go ahead, dust off your vinyl, again, like I told you last time with Godspell, or dust off your CD and put it in and listen to Jesus Christ Superstar, particularly uh, The Temple as regards this particular gospel. Jesus had proclaimed the message, and now it was time to move on. And that's what he told the disciples. I suspect that this story of crowds gathering at the door of where Jesus was staying was repeated more than once during Jesus' ministry, and these occasions simply didn't make it into all of the Gospels. So from all of this, we can see it's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to go to a private place to pray. It's okay to look for the hand of Jesus reaching out to lift us up and to grasp it. And it's good to be the hand that reaches out and lifts up others. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military cha chaplains, for those serving in pr prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy. O oh God. God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for the international health organizations that in time of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. For all weary by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, we pray especially for Dave Dennis, Dale Armory, Felicia Arnold, Louisa Isaacs, Faith Hartledge, Brenda Calderon, Elsie Halla, Roberta Rossi, Ellen Demiria, Ellen Linatus, Courtney Arnold, Randy Knecht, John Steptoe, the family of Marilyn Crum, the Kelly family, Amy K. Nielsen, Wendy and Jeff, Larry Howard, Howard, Margaret Kranz, family of Walter Zakorski, Marion Suford, Kelly Davis, Diane Toscano, Ken and Donna. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, you. with you. Please share the peace with someone through text or who's ever sitting next to you, give them a hug or uh, maybe, you know, a phone call this week. Um, also, offering will be um, how to, to give to church will be at the end of the video. And there's one more important announcement that I want to make sure everybody hears is that there's an end, we're going to have an annual congregational meeting. It'll be hail, held after the 9.30 a.m. parking lot service on February 14th at approximately 10.30 a.m. Please join us in your car as we review 2020, looking for, toward ministry in 2021. And then we have to uh, we'll have a, maybe a vote and stuff. So if you want to come in or you want to touch the microphone, you have, you'll have to wear a mask and um, come up that way. Okay? All are welcome to attend. Hope to see you there. Let us continue with the offering prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God. By your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give, give you thanks, thanks and grace. grace. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is your light. Thanks be to God. Oh